Sherlock. Today we're going to be looking at a heavily requested Electro Boom video. Specifically, we're going to be looking at his making a Jacob's Ladder video, which is basically two wires with an arc between them that goes up. Important to keep a safe distance, but knowing how crazy Electro Boom is, I don't know, man. <laughs> For those of you who don't know me, I'm Tyler Fulce. I'm a nuclear engineer with a little over 10 years of experience in the commercial nuclear power industry. From engineering to operations to emergency response. Don't claim to know everything there is nuclear, but I can certainly share some knowledge. Let's get right into it. According to historians, Jacob used this special ladder to ascend to heavens. <laughs> Love this music. Well, naturally, of course. If you are too unfortunate to touch this ladder, you'll die. Because yeah. it's made of very high power, high voltage, low frequency across two metal rods. But unlike the legend, it doesn't guarantee you'll go to heaven. Yeah, um, you might be going to heaven or somewhere in the afterlife a lot sooner than you thought if you don't follow good electrical safety procedures. That's why they exist. Like, don't be near, don't go near the ark. <laughs> Unless you have led an honest life, have been good to your neighbors. Get a little philosophical Fine. here. I don't know why they call it a Jacob's Ladder, and I don't care. We need high voltage, and I can create it with my microwave oven transformer. Oh, it creates yes. over 2,000 volts. Now we need to shape two wires and connect them to the transformer. Hey, I just came back from future to warn you one last time. You are banned to do this high voltage experiment at home. It is more dangerous than having an agitated cobra around your neck. At least the venom takes a while to kill you, but this doesn't. In a you hear about the leading cause of most uh, homemade DIY electrical projects involves uh, microwaves because they like to play with high voltage and <laughs> that's one of the most affordable ways to get a high voltage thing with, with household appliances. And unfortunately, there's a reason why a bunch of uh, electrical safety um, for both shock and arc protection exist at a nuclear power plant, for instance. And that's just fairly basic. You know, you're working with things that are high voltage, current, frequency, electrical hazards. If you want to hear more about my thoughts on electrical hazards and what's actually the most dangerous, I'll pin a comment below that gets into amps versus voltage, that sort of thing. The point is, this this Jacob's ladder is a is a pretty nasty combination. Jacob's ladder. We have two wires like this connected to high voltage. The arc is created from the shortest gap and rises all the way up. It's a very the simple is that design. The arc is hot, so the hot air pushes the arc up. I connected my wires to the transformer so we can see the arc. <laughs> I don't oh, see it. I think the gap between the wires is a little bit too wide for the two Maybe. kilo to jump across. Dude, <laughs> he's not even wearing gloves or anything. Now, I know uh, Electro Boom is very well versed in this sort of thing, and he would only shock for entertainment purposes, and he knows, he knows the hazards very well. But to me, just watching this, no, an exposed wire, no gloves, no, no shock protection of, of any kind, it's just crazy. I just killed myself, but I was saved with sheer luck. See, my right hand touched the wire first, which shocked me back to my senses. If both my hands touched the wires at the same time, now you would be watching a few hours of my corpse cooking to perfection. I mean, and that's one that, yeah, he, so what he's talking about is completing a circuit going from, you know, your left arm to the right arm through your heart. Yeah. And that is one, there is one actually bit of safety protocol about doing certain activities one-handed. There is no safety protocol that I'm aware of about shocking yourself back to your senses, though. That's, um, that's a new one to me. I'm pretty sure that doesn't meet YouTube guidelines either. <laughs> Maybe I could have posted on Live Leak. Oh so my. never get too comfortable around high voltage and always wear protective gear. See, even though yes. only one hand was touching the wire, unfortunately I wasn't touching earth or any <laughs> He talks about wearing protective gear, his hands are so close to some wires that that are right next to the transformer and I can't actually tell if you switch the thing on back on or off anymore or not um by the way if you're not sure treat everything is energized until proven otherwise conductive surfaces it still zapped me always remember any conductor like your body has parasitic capacitances to the environment so if the voltage is high mm. enough there will be high enough currents to zap you 
Let me show you. See, this probe is not connected anywhere. But when I bring it close to this wire, it'll arc. You hear it? You can hear it. I can, can't quite see uh, it. Maybe if I make the room dark, you can't even see the arcs. Yep. You see them? The probe is still not connected anywhere. If it was, the arcs would be huge. Oh yeah, yeah. That's that's for subtle. For around two kilovolts, I need around one millimeter for the arc to jump. <laughs> Anyways, for around two kilovolts, I need around one millimeter of air gap for the arc to jump. Let's try it. Whoa! <laughs> My puny wire. Got them a little close together I need there. Wires like this so they won't melt. Let's give it a try. Come on. And of course, the idea is to have the thing just go up and away as and as they get further and further apart, the arc just becomes unable to sustain itself just because the gap is too wide at that point. But <laughs> the breaker popped. Damn it! I just want to celebrate. Now, Breakers pop for a reason. Gap is too short for protection. For the arc to rise. I need to widen the gap. But then that means that I have to have much higher voltage, which I could make using a simple circuit like this to increase the output voltage okay. peak to double. The problem is that the capacitor I scavenged from my microwave oven is broken, and all I have are these 100 picofarad high voltage capacitors, which limit the output power a lot. Let me show you. Here I have a single capacitor series with my power supply and you can see that around one millimeter the arcs start jumping. It's a little bigger than before. Now all I did is that I added the diode I talked about earlier and we can see that the arcs can jump from a much further distance. For those of you who don't know, a diode is just a one-way switch for, for, current, for current. For those of you that are more mechanically inclined, it's the electrical version of a check valve. This is too weak for Jacob's ladder though, because as soon as I open the gap, it stops yeah. going. Yeah, not enough oomph. We need more power to be able to stretch the arcs, see? <laughs> for a wider arc, we need more power to create and maintain a longer ionized air channel. That's interesting. It's super close range, but when it gets close, it's enough to melt those poor wires. Arcs are scary. Arc flashes are one of the biggest safety hazards that we prepare for at a, at a nuclear power plant. I've never actually seen one there, which is kind of miraculous considering how long I've been there and how many big big switch gears we've had, but we've seen many safety videos of them. Here's an example of what an arc flash can do. Not only is the temperature in multiple thousands of degrees Celsius, it also creates a shock wave that sends a bunch of shrapnel at extremely high temperatures going straight through the worker's body. So third degree burns plus shrapnel and fragmentation. I like what Electroboom's doing, but I just wanted to show how scary an arc flash can really get. So I guess I can keep get the that. gap wide and then stretch an arc across it manually like this. Manual? Dude! That's crazy. Uh, so Manual Jacob's letter. <laughs> I think it still needs more pizzazz. Look at that. What if I put a capacitor between the rods so that when the arcs reach them, the capacitor blows up for some firework effect? <laughs> Here's the capacitor. Ready? He's just holding his fist as like protection. <laughs> Capacitor legs melted, but the capacitor didn't blow up? Is anything gonna work today? <laughs> so much power melted the legs, wow. but the capacitor is not even bald. Arcs are finicky Let though. Check something. That's one of the reasons why they're dangerous is because they're finicky and hard to control, especially if you're just sticking a rod there to manually get these little arc pulses going up. 
Oh, I don't want to give any ideas, but can you imagine someone just like manually playing with control rods in there? I mean, that's essentially the, they did the equivalent of that with the Demon Core experiment, but and it's kind of the same sort of stuff. That's why. It seems like the high voltage did shorten the capacitor internally before it even had a chance to heat up and blow up. Yeah, sure. Capacitor's probably not wait, rated for whatever voltage that's at. Ever. Hey, what if I put some matches between them so at least they set on fire? I'm holding a match there. Let's give it a try. That's one way to light a match. Breaker. Fire. Fire creates plasma. Let me introduce you to fire. <laughs> we don't need high voltage after all. Breaker. And what if I add some sparklers to it? It's getting there. Because why not? <laughs> oh my god. Happy birthday. Oh. There's current running through there, and he's got sparklers and pliers trying to position Yay. them in there. Let's make it fancy. <laughs> I designed a stand for my fancy Jacob's ladder, and I'll print it. Oh, with your 3D printer. So I'll be giving away this Lalsbot Mini 3D printer. It's a pretty solid printer. I've had it for over a year now, and printed a few things with it. Very useful tool to have. It is a two-piece part, which I'll glue together like this. And I'll drill the birds Sir? out of the holes. And so we have a shrine. Mm. <laughs> I leave a link Dude. to the 3D model in my website. Yeah, when you do your ohm and your humming, you can match the noise of that transformer. <laughs> match frequencies. In case you need it for spiritual reasons. Of course, you didn't think I was going to use these tiny sparklers, eh? <laughs> Say hello to my 28 inch sparkler. Dude. Put them in. Let's add a bunch of more tiny sparklers oh, to it. Oh, is that thing gonna fall on him? Let's Look how start small that thing is. The hell? Oh, those little tiny things. The hell? Why bad things happen to good people? Come on. Dude. Whoa. That? He, he, he's okay? Let's... Thanks to my flimsy wire connections to the transformer that fell off quickly, I only sustained some third degree burns. My stupid lo Because that thing got disconnected right as it was falling on him? Whoa. Now I know, I don't think that was planned. I mean, I know Electro Boom includes a little a little shocks and tingles as part of his video for entertainment purposes, but that was scary. Sparklers made my structure top heavy, which of all people fell right on top of me. I leave a bunch of safety tips on my website, but such experiments <laughs> are not worth dying for, so don't do it. <laughs> I was gonna say, yeah, step one, don't do it. Don't, don't make arcs on purpose. Don't not use PPE. <laughs> don't stand in a position where the uh, the dangerous object can come hurtling towards you. Uh, just a just a few of my immediate reactions. Let's just celebrate like normal people with oversized sparklers. Yay! Oh my goodness! If that didn't get disconnected, he he could have gotten seriously hurt. Is this montage? I know this was for him celebrating a million subs, but man, this is crazy. Dang, that's a circuit art. I've seen one of those, uh, one of those little boards, um, a little, a little card. I've seen one of those, uh, pop before and it was already just, I wasn't, I wasn't touching it and no, nobody was touching it. It was actually coincidental. I was, um, supervising some INC instrumentation and control techs in the, uh, 
in, in the relay racks and we did we were working on on one card and then another card um a few a few cabinets down um not on the same circuit all of these were um were independent uh just saw one of them just smoke when it just happened to be right in the area it's like wow No. What even is that? I quite recognize that. Wow. It's a miracle this guy is still with us. And he provides such great ed educational and entertaining content for electrical stuff. I've really enjoyed this video. Thanks again for the recommendation. But man, that was scary. But yeah, I know that didn't look that much, that it wasn't as dramatic as the arc flash that I showed you, but that there was a lot of voltage, a lot of current, um, frequency. Everything was in a spot that it had the potential to cause serious injury there. I'm glad you're still with us, buddy. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time.